Hey, it's Chris. You guys have been telling me that you love these unbelievably useful apps videos that I've been putting together, which is cool. In fact, you've been telling me that you don't wanna see anything else. So I wanna keep that going, but I wanna take it in a little bit different direction. Just kinda of switch things up a little bit today with unbelievably useful iPad tips. Now, some of these are definitely gonna be new to you guys. The first one was new to me recently, and it definitely blew my mind. That's why I'm putting it first. Some of these, maybe you've heard of before, and if that's the case, then you're welcome for the reminder. I'm a huge iPad fan. I use the iPad Pro all day, every day. In fact, today I've got an iPad Pro on each side of my MacBook. I got one machine for email, one for editing videos, and one for notes. I know, it's ridiculous. I got all these iPads laying around though, which you saw from a couple videos ago, and I gotta do something with them, so I might as well put them to good use. Now, subscribers know that I've been obsessed with the 12.9 inch ever since I got it, but recently I kinda switched. I've been trying out the 10 and a half inch. If you wanna hear about that experience, and if you wanna know which one I've ended up preferring, then let me know down in the comments, cause I'm happy to make a video about that. But let's dive right in right now by talking about something that I just found out about that I'm way more excited about than I probably should be, and that's the fact that you can trace paper using the Apple Pencil on the iPad Pro. Like, did you know about this before me? Just put a piece of paper down, maybe tape it down, and go to town, you can start tracing. Like, look at this, I'm tracing an Andy Minio face here, and it's gonna turn out way better than if I just drawn it out. This kind of reminds me of when I was in college, and I was taking art class, and there was a tracing machine across the hall, and everyone would go over there and use that to get an A, to make their stuff look really good. This is like that. Nobody has to know that you can't draw. Of course, you could just use layers in an app like Procreate and basically do the exact same thing. But still, now here's a tip for you. If you've got an iPad Pro and you need a place to stash your Apple Pencil, you might be interested in today's sponsor, Zugu Case. There's a lot to like about this case, including a robust bumper for major drop protection, a cover with sleep and wake functionality, a magnetic kickstand with eight different viewing angles, and perhaps my favorite part, the built-in Apple Pencil storage. If you wanna pick one of these up for yourself, then check out the link down in the description after you've gathered all the other tips. And by the way, there's lots of other cool stuff down in the description too, lots of fun links for you to explore. So basically what I'm saying is, check out the description before you go on and do something else. Do it. All right, so this next tip I discovered completely by accident. I'm sure this has happened to other people out there too, but did you know that if you hold down the command key on your iPad keyboard, it will show you all the keyboard shortcuts for whatever app you're using. This is great for somebody like me because I always wanna use a keyboard shortcut like I have it up in my mind, but I can't remember it until I've done it like 100 different times. But that's kind of the thing with the iPad. You don't have a mouse, so using these keyboard shortcuts really kind of helps take the place of the mouse in a lot of cases. And it's so nice to be able to see what shortcuts are available depending on the screen that you're looking at. Now this next tip, I have to admit, out of all the tips here, this is probably the one that you're most likely to know already, but I feel like I have to mention it here anyways because it's just so useful. So if you're multitasking and you drag a floating app onto the screen, you can swipe it off to the right to get rid of it, but it's not actually gone. If you want to, you can swipe it back onto the screen or you could even command tab to get it back. All right, let's just be honest. Was that super lame? Did you already know about that one? If so, then this next one is a little bit less obvious. Obvious, but less obvious. If you ever find yourself wishing that you could easily record your screen, you can easily record your screen. All you have to do is enable the shortcut under settings, control center, and customize controls. Once you're there, just tap on the green plus icon to add screen recording. This is great though for iPads and especially iPad Pro users because it's a great way to capture a time lapse of something that you've either written or drawn. Moving on to one of my favorite Apple ecosystem things, the ability to copy and paste between all of your different devices. I used to have to use an app called Copy back in the day, and there were several like it, to let me copy and paste between devices, but you don't have to do that anymore thanks to iOS 11. Now, as long as all your devices are on the same network, you can copy something on your iPhone, for instance, and then just paste it onto your iPad or Mac. One of the coolest things that you can do with your iPad Pro and Apple Pencil is take notes or make sketches, which would be sketch notes, so notes. I should've just said notes. But it can take a while, though, to unlock your iPad, launch the notes, create a new note, and then get into it. So if you're a student in class or something and somebody says something interesting that you need to get down, you probably already missed it. But the cool thing is, all you have to do with your Apple Pencil is from your iPad's lock screen, single tap with the Apple Pencil on the lock screen, and boom, you're right into a brand new note. 
super simple, super quick. It literally saves you so much time. It makes you think of the iPad almost like a sticky note. It's that convenient. It's just there and you can start writing. Now here's something that's just good for you guys to know. If you're ever having internet issues and you go into Notification Center and you turn off your Wi-Fi using that button there, you can actually still use AirPlay and AirDrop. Now AirPlay, I don't actually care about that too much anymore unless it's AirPlay 2, which means that I can pair two HomePods together, which is awesome but I don't really play stuff using AirPlay on anything else these days. I don't know, do you guys still use AirPlay? But AirDrop is awesome, I use that all the time. So it's good to know that you can still use that even with some internet issues. Now last, but definitely not least, I feel like I need to remind you guys of the five finger swipe. I know there's a lot of iPad users out there who don't know about this or completely forgot about it and are still using their home button to go back home. But instead you can use five fingers to swipe close to go home no matter what screen you're looking at. And also while we're at it, you can use five fingers to swipe left and right to go between apps. <laughs> it feels really goofy. Uh, but that's what you do. Why do you need to do that? Well, yeah, it's a little bit quicker than like going down to the dock or if you're using a keyboard to use some sort of keyboard shortcut. I don't know. It's just different things for different people. Now, I know that those last two tips aren't exactly brand new, but let's be honest here. You totally forgot about them. Well, hey, that's about it for this video. Hopefully you guys like this. Let me know. Do you want to see more in this series? Do you want to see more tips? Do you want to see more apps? Do you want to see more unbelievably useful accessories? What do you guys want to see? Let me know. I want to keep this series alive and kicking because it's doing well and you guys really seem to enjoy it. I mean, it's supposed to be useful. Is it useful? Let me know and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. I got some stuff cooking up for the people that are in Notification Squad that arrive at these videos early. So turn on the bell icon too and I'll catch you in the next video. Later.